I bet you don't know about these apps that Samsung actually make. Well, today you will. Let's go. So in my hand, in a folder on my phone, I have five apps made by Samsung that I reckon you've never heard of. Maybe a couple you have, but I reckon most of them you haven't. Let's start off with probably one that I think deserves way more attention than it's ever gotten. It's Galaxy Enhance X. This app is phenomenal. And Samsung have just recently updated it to make it even better than what it was before. So let's go through it. The whole premise of this Galaxy Enhance X app is that it basically uses a bit of AI and sort of processing to improve or sort of restore photos. That was the original premise, but it's now sort of taken on, I guess, some extra arms, kind of like an octopus in a way, where it can actually do way more than that. And sometimes even sort of turn videos into like little moments. Let's go through some of the things that it can do. First thing, I guess, before any of that is let's download the downloadable features that are here. This is the new stuff they've just added. When you click on downloadable features, it brings up two modules, which means that over time, Samsung can add more. What you've got here at the top is sky guide. So if you've got a photo of like the night sky, it can help sort of guide where the stars and what you're actually looking at. Then you've got camera shift and the camera shift one is designed if you have sort of people in a photo and you want to shift the perception of how they appear in the photo, the camera could sort of shift to make them appear bigger or smaller, depending on the landscape that they're in. That's two downloadable ones. And you just go in there and download them. You can sort of swipe through at the top to see some of the extra stuff that it can do, like fixed blur, single take, where it can turn like little video clips into a single take file, which is phenomenal, but let's load in some pictures or videos and sort of see the options. When you select your picture, so let's just do a photo first. You go into the gallery and you sort of find the photo that you want to fix. So for example, this one here of sort of my son jumping up and down, sort of slight blur on the face. Now you can see all of the options and the toggles down the bottom. You've got things like suggestions, which sort of use AI to detect the photo and give you ideas of what it is you should fix or add, like whether you want to make it a portrait, whether you want to fix blur or the camera shift. There's also a magic button. If you hit this magic button, it will just automatically apply all the stuff it thinks it needs and then show you a little before or after in the slider. Really clever. Then you could sort of toggle through the color tone. You've got quick fixes. You've got face. You've got creative. So you can turn like a time lapse or something along those lines. and that can work for certain types of photos. So if you've got a photo of like the night sky or the daytime and it's a landscape, you doing a 24 hour time lapse makes it look really good. Not really designed for like photos of like my son, but for photos of landscapes, it's actually really, really cool. So you've got a whole bunch of different sort of effects that you can add in and it just basically does what it does, enhances the photo. You also can take motion photos and turn them into single take. I think this one is genius. If you're taking a motion photo and the way motion photo works is it records little clips here or there, either side of the photo being taken, the motion photo will actually be saved as a video clip. And then what this app will do is it will extract that video clip and then extract frames from it and then turn it into a little album of photos. Love this option. Also one that I've literally just discovered here, it's called Motion Clip, where it'll actually extract a little clip of the motion photo, and turn like it into a moving sticker. That's amazing. Love that sort of stuff. But it's not just photos that this app works with too. It's also videos. So if you select a video, you get the single take option where it will take a portion of that video and sort of extract moments out of it. Great. Again, love that. Because if you don't take a single take initially, you can just go back and do it this way. There's also an option to make it like a long exposure, which for the right type of video, like whether that be a video of moving cars, whether that be a video of sort of a landscape with like running water, you can turn that into a really beautiful sort of long exposure photo almost. And it just looks really good. It's just a really powerful app. And I think Samsung, by the looks of things, are going to keep increasing its functionality. It's definitely one you should use and download. The next app I want to go through is Samsung Food. Now, this wasn't always a Samsung app. I believe Samsung acquired this app, but it's a Samsung app 
all the same now. Effectively, this is, I kind of want to say like a community for recipes and for meal planning. Because when you go in here, you're immediately greeted with like a home tab and it gives you like suggestions of recipes and meals and sort of guides you through different styles and combinations and cuisines, and then you can access it straight from there. It's also got communities. So like you can join groups for certain styles of cuisines or styles of meals. So whether that be quick dinners, whether that be Italian, whether that be pizza, it's really niche down and you can kind of become part of it. Also, when you sort of go into this app as well, and you sort of go through the tabs at the bottom, you have an explore tab, which is almost like a social media feed for recipes and food. You've also got like a saves tab. So if you save a recipe, they sort of can show up here. You can also create like a meal plan. So every day of the week, you can add in your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and kind of plan your week out. And the best part is when you select a recipe, you can then add all of the ingredients from that recipe directly into your shopping list as sort of the last tab. What's also really cool too is the recipes are customizable to you. So it gives you like how many servings and how much you need for that serving size. But if you don't need that many servings, just reduce it. And then you can see what you need for the serving size you want to make. I think that's great. Also, what's really cool too is you can edit the recipe. So if you think it's good, but you want to add something in, you can do that. And then you can save that as your sort of thing. There is options in here for like AI recipes, but I think that's a paid Samsung Food Plus that you need to sign up for. I'm not doing that, but if you feel like that's necessary, go for it. But otherwise the app is free for pretty much everything else. I like the idea of it. Like I like that I think eventually this could kind of be merged in with Samsung Health because it does track your food and you can see macros of different recipes that you're sort of wanting to make. It's almost like just like a food community. I like the idea of it and it's just downloadable through the Galaxy Store. Next is Samsung Kids. Samsung Kids effectively turns your product phone or tablet into a kid's tablet or kid's phone. And you have complete control as a parent over everything. You can sort of see the interface. It's very, very child friendly. There's some preloaded apps are in, in there. It's sort of centered around this central figure called Crocro. Crocro. Don't know where that name came from, but you can see the apps in there. A lot of it's centered around him. He's got like a village. There's like a music band. There's a magic voice app, which sort of changes the tone of your voice when you record. This will change my voice. 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 There's a camera app. The camera app's quite neat because you can add effects and filters and play around with it. And then it saves it to a separate gallery inside Samsung Kids. You can also add other apps in. So you can add any app that's installed from your phone. Only the parents can do this though. It's locked behind your fingerprint or passcode, or whatever method of security you have. And you can also add kid-friendly apps that are suggested through the Galaxy Store. Again, locked by your fingerprint. I actually really like how this works because when the kid goes into Samsung Kids Next, there's like a little present and they tap on it and they'll see sort of the app unwrap primer and it's pretty neat and it gives them a bit of a fun sort of experience behind it. But then there's the parental control side of things where you can go in and control how long they get access for, the screen time for each day. So it's not just overarching, you can control each individual day. It's really sort of granular. And then when it's time to exit out of kids mode, they need the fingerprint or the phone's passcode to do so. So if you have kids that you give your device to, rather than just letting them access the Play Store to download things, try putting it into kids mode if they're, you know, age appropriate for it and let them play with stuff through here instead. I think it's a good option and it's available on pretty much any Samsung phone or device. Then we have PenUp. PenUp, I think this is probably more of like an S Pen related app. I have spoken about PenUp before. I feel like it goes a little bit underappreciated within the Samsung community because Samsung have effectively made social media for creatives or for people who love to draw and express themselves artistically. The PenUp app, I guess this is kind of like Samsung food in a way, just for drawing. You've got a whole bunch of different tabs down the bottom. You've got people that post 
sort of their drawings and sort of to communities and challenges, I guess, as well as drawing challenges built into here too. But the main sort of aspect of it is, well, there's a couple of different aspects of it that sort of are the pillars of it. There's coloring. So you can like color in and it's quite soothing or sort of calming if that's sort of something you like to do. Heaps of different brushes in there, lots of different options. There's a cheating way where you can just fill the color of the artwork that you've selected. You know, if you're into artistic stuff, you probably don't want to do that. You want to color it in. The good thing is too, if you select an artwork, you can see everyone else that has posted something similar within that artwork too. I, I like that. It's kind of motivating. But the other element that I think is quite neat is the learning to draw. Because if you are trying to sort of get yourself into art and you don't really know where to start or you're lacking inspiration, you can pick someone else's design and then you can actually be guided through the process of how to draw that. What's really good too with this is that if you sort of are starting to draw, it'll change the brushes depending on what it is that's needed. So if you're coloring in with like a red color and a certain type of brush, it'll sort of stay there. And then when it changes, it automatically changes. You don't have to think about what it is you need. You can change that, but I think it's quite good if you're learning initially to start there. You've also got the option to boost the speed if it's a little bit too slow, but along the way you pause it, you sort of color in and then you press play and you sort of follow along and there's options to change transparency and layers, etc. And the last part of it is like photo drawing, where you can load in your own photo and then sort of trace over it and kind of try and replicate something like a sketch. It's almost like what sketch to image does with AI or the portrait studio more so, but manual because you can do it yourself. And again, you have different layer options, opacity and create layer masks, all stuff that's kind of above my head, but for the right person that likes this stuff, they'll get a lot out of it. And the last one is a module that sits inside Goodlock called Registar. For the people in the know about Goodlock, you'll know what this is. But for those who aren't, one, go download Goodlock, soon to be available on the Play Store, but for now, the Galaxy Store, and then download a module called Registar. The Registar module allows you a couple of different things, big things in my opinion. The first one is the ability to adjust the settings menu. So if you think Samsung's settings menu is a little bit too convoluted or you're not happy with where things are placed, you want to access things that you access all the time a little bit more frequently, then you can go in here and drag and drop the settings that you want to be grouped together yourself. Whether that be battery next to device care or if you search software updates all the time, move the software update one up. A whole bunch of things you can sort of move and sort of place anywhere you want to have it the way you want. But if you don't like it, you can always go and reset it back in register. The second part to register that I think is the most important is the option to add like a back tap shortcut. Now I know iOS sort of started this a little bit, but Samsung sort of opened it up with register quite a lot because in here you can do a double tap to, for something or a triple tap for something. So a double tap you could have to maybe take a screenshot and then like a triple tap, have it to open an app. And then it works quite neatly, but you can configure it sort of any way that you like. You also can customize the press and hold for the power button too. Initially, it's not much. It's just either a Google assistant or power off. Whereas now you've got the option for it to be pretty much anything, like maybe even turn on the flashlight, should you wish. And this is where you can do it. They are five Samsung apps that you may not be using or have heard about before, but hopefully you have now. If you haven't heard of any of them, let me know if you have let me know. But hit subscribe for more Samsung content like this. This is the stuff I really enjoy making and educating people on. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ew!